How many people do you know who have a vinegar prop bottle? Well, you know at least one, me. And that's because I talk about cleaning with vinegar all the time. In fact, my first ever cleaning video that came out back in 2011 involved a vinegar cleaning tip. So over the years, I have talked a good vinegar cleaning game. So in this video, I've got 21 of my favorite vinegar cleaning tips lined up just for you. So get your prop or not prop real bottle of vinegar and let's get cleaning. Just a quick few tidbits about vinegar before we get started. You might be wondering why vinegar is such a great cleaner. I mean, it's inexpensive, it's readily available. A lot of us clean with it already, but we might not know why. So here it is. First of all, it's a great deodorizer. You might think that's counterintuitive because vinegar stinks. Well, in some people's minds it stinks. But for whatever reason, vinegar can find those terrible odors, trap them, and get rid of them. The next thing it does is lift dirt and grease to a surface. So it's a great degreaser. It's really great at lifting up dirt, which is why I love using it with cleaning. And finally, it leaves a nice streak-free shine, which is why it's such a fantastic glass cleaner. Now, just a couple things to keep in mind when you're using vinegar. It can be harmful to your eyes if you get it in your eyes. So just be mindful of that. What you wanna look for is plain white 5% vinegar. Some people say, do you need distilled? Do you not? Whatever, just get 5% plain white vinegar. And finally, make sure that you don't use it on any natural stone surfaces like marble, travertine, or quartz, because over time, it can ruin the finish. If you've been on the internet in the last 10 years, you know that vinegar and dish soap combine together to make a very powerful cleaner. The recipe that we generally like to use is two parts vinegar to one part dish soap. That makes a pretty thick cleaner that can get rid of a lot of greasy, grimy buildup. Now here's the thing, there's no magic recipe when it comes to this combination. It's more a matter of understanding the cleaning challenge that you have ahead of you and what you're actually trying to accomplish. If it's a really greasy, grimy, silty, sooty surface that you have to clean and you need a DIY recipe for that, I would amp up the dish soap. I'd put more in there because that's exactly what dish soap does. It's a surfactant. It brings dirt up to the surface, making it easier to clean away. Vinegar is more of that acid, so it breaks things down. It helps to leave surfaces clean, grease-free, and streak-free. So you might want to amp up the vinegar if say you're cleaning a dirty window outside. You don't want as much dish soap in there because you don't have as much greasy, grimy stuff to clean. Um, and you sort of want more of that streak-free shine. You will still have to do a little bit of cleanup afterward because there will be some residue from the dish soap, but it won't be nearly as much as if you were cleaning that more heavy-duty cleaning task. So I hope that makes sense. The bottom line is, this is a winning recipe. You can use it in most places around your home so long as it is safe to use vinegar on that surface. And the idea here is just to play around with that ratio and see what works for the cleaning task at hand. If you think you've overdosed or underdosed on something, you can always change it up by diluting it with water as well. So there's another quick tip. One place we tend to develop a lot of weird odors is the fridge. Quick and easy way to get rid of those odors, even aside from the baking soda that you have in your fridge, all you need to do is fill a glass or a dish with plain white vinegar, pop it in the fridge, and the vinegar will absorb the odors. And let me put your fears to rest. Your fridge is not going to smell like vinegar. The smell actually dissipates quite fast. When you're picking out your produce at the grocery store, you probably notice that some of your produce has like a waxy coating on it. And that's just a combination of pesticides and other products that are used to safeguard your produce while it's in transport and to keep it lasting for longer. But truthfully, you probably don't want to be eating it. I mean, it wouldn't be on the fruits and vegetables if it wasn't FDA approved, blah, 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 but still doesn't mean that you have to ingest it. So to get rid of that stuff, you can just make up your own simple produce wash and it's very easy to do. You're going to take equal parts. So let's say a cup of water, a cup of white vinegar, and to that you are slowly going to add two tablespoons of baking soda. Now you can put this in a spray bottle or if you have something, let's say like a head of lettuce or some grapes, you can pour it directly into a clean sink or a basin. Then you're going to either spray it on your produce or put your produce inside that basin or the sink 
and let it sit for a few moments. If you're soaking something, you can let it sit for about 10 minutes like berries or grapes or lettuce. And if you're just spraying it on an item, you can let it sit for, you know, two, three minutes. The baking soda, what's nice about it is it kind of helps scrub things off and you can always sprinkle a little bit more on there if you like. Then just make sure you give it a good rinse and dry it. And now your produce is clean and ready to be eaten. Rejuvenate your bathroom tools. Now, no one ever thinks of this, but your bathroom tools like your loofahs, pumice stones, and razor blades, they need a cleaning too. They don't just get clean because they're in the shower. So to do this, simply fill your sink with equal parts of vinegar and water, soak the items for an hour or so, and then rinse and dry. Soap residue, body oils, and smells will be gone. These items will be cleaned with literally no effort on your part. If you haven't heard the news already, vinegar is incredible for your dishwasher. Not only does it help break down some of those odors that go on in this teeny space, it also helps reduce soap scum and hard water stains from forming on any of the stuff in the dishwasher during the wash. That means less streaks and less watermarks when you take out your clean stuff. All you need to do is add one to two cups of white vinegar to a dishwasher safe bowl, put it on the top rack of your dishwasher, add regular soap, and run through your load as usual. When you unload your dishwasher, you'll see you have less streaks and less watermarks. You'll be very impressed. Perhaps what vinegar is most famous for in the cleaning world is glass cleaner. And a lot of you guys know I've been using this recipe for years, but I'm going to share it again because if you're not using it, you need to put down the glass cleaner that you're using now and make this and use this instead. Get yourself a clean spray bottle and in it, you're going to add equal parts of water and white vinegar. Give it a good shake and use that to clean your glass. The vinegar will help lift any of that dirt and grease to the surface and help leave a nice streak free shine behind. And of course, when you're cleaning glass, or when you're cleaning mirrors, you wanna make sure that you're using a nice soft flat weave microfiber cloth so that you don't have any streaks. Several years ago, they banned the use of certain weed killers here in Canada, which left a lot of Canadians with a lot of dandelions. And we were curious about what to do. So it came out that vinegar was actually very effective at getting rid of weeds. So if you have regular 5% vinegar, that's great. If you can get your hands on the more powerful stuff, 6%, 10%, that is also very effective. The way that you do it, the way that we've been doing it is like this. We fill a spray bottle with straight vinegar. We go right up to the weed. We give it a few sprays and you want to spray kind of right at the root because who cares about the top? You want to get right, right down to business but you want to make sure that you're not spraying any grass or any other beautiful plants or flowers that you have growing adjacent to those weeds because the vinegar will also kill those, which you don't want to do. If you have interlocking, Chad got really aggressive a couple years ago because the weeds got really aggressive in our interlocking and he just kind of poured vinegar right there into the interlocking, which was a risky move because it could have seeped in and gotten to the grass, but you know what? He's, he's pretty in the know when it comes to gardening and he did a pretty great job. We didn't lose too much grass, but we did lose a lot of weeds. So there you go. If you're somebody who has some stuff growing in your garden that you'd rather not see, give vinegar a try. Whether they're in the kitchen, the craft room, or the garage, scissors get grimy. When your scissor blades get sticky, just wipe them down with a cloth dipped in white vinegar. Unlike soap and water, vinegar won't ruin the blades or rust the metal. Working at a restaurant, you learn a lot of things. One of the things I picked up while working at a steakhouse was how to shine your cutlery with vinegar. All you need to do is fill a dish halfway with water, halfway with white vinegar, soak your cutlery for about 10 minutes or so, and then pull it out piece by piece and wipe it with a microfiber cloth. The vinegar will help shine up the cutlery and remove any of those watermarks or any food that didn't come off from the dishwasher. Vinegar also helps out when you're doing your laundry and you can use it as a laundry booster. So quite simply, a laundry booster helps your detergent work better. So you don't have to buy anything fancy, you can just use white vinegar and you can put it into the little pre-rinse compartment if you have one, or you can put it into your machine as it's filling up with water and you just let that soak. Now, what I do is I, I put my detergent into my machine and then I just pour a bunch of vinegar in all the different compartments. The bleach compartment, the fabric softener compartment, pre-wash, whatever I've got, vinegar goes in there because it helps lighten or brighten fabrics depending on the color that your fabric 
fabrics are. It helps soften your fabrics and it also helps deodorize them. So if anything's a little bit stinky, vinegar is going to help out. Then you can just take your clothes, either hang them to dry or put them in the dryer and you will notice a difference. Now, don't worry, your clothes are not going to come out smelling like vinegar. Some of the least respected cleaning tools in your home live in your bathroom. Your toilet bowl brush and the plunger, that tool that no one wants to look at or think about until they need it. Now these things oftentimes don't get cleaned because let's be honest, when are you ever gonna feel motivated to pick one of those up and clean them? But if you just pour straight vinegar into a bucket and soak them, 30 minutes overnight, you can't hurt them, you're gonna be doing them a big favor. What that does is it helps to break down some of the buildup that's been there, you know, anything that's old and hanging around, creating odors or looking unsightly. Then you can obviously dump the bin somewhere um, where you're not going to be eating uh, from and give it a good rinse, let those tools dry and then replace them. You won't even have to do any scrubbing. And the nice thing is the vinegar will break down a lot of that build up for you, leaving those items just a little more clean and palatable. Ooey gooey stickers. When you get that great new thing from that store that you love and it has a sticker on the bottom, rather than breaking every nail on scratching that sticky residue off, simply rub some white vinegar onto the sticky area, let it sit for about five minutes and then just wipe it away vinegar will break down that residue. If you, like me, like cooking, but you don't necessarily want your whole house to smell like cooking, there's a quick little trick that you can try with water and white vinegar. All you need to do is add two parts water to one part vinegar into a saucepan and boil it. The steam that's created from this concoction will help trap cooking odors and take it along with it. If you've ever been in the shower, looked up and noticed that the water is not coming out straight down or straight out, but it's kind of shooting in different directions. That's a really good indication that your shower head has hard water buildup. This is nothing to feel bad about. It's perfectly normal and natural, but it is annoying. And it means that your shower head is not gonna work as efficiently as you would like it to. Very easy fix for this is to fill a plastic bag with plain white vinegar. Make sure there are no holes in it. That would be a real bummer. And then affix it to the shower head with an elastic band. Leave it overnight. The vinegar will help to break down all of those little pieces of hard water buildup that have been stuck in the shower head over time. Then the next morning, just remove the vinegar, dump it down the drain, run the shower head, and you'll see immediately, you'll notice a difference. Now, if you're still having some issues, you can take uh, either a little cleaning toothbrush or a cloth and just gently give a scrub and that will help to lift off any of the residual hard water buildup. This also will work really well on a faucet head if needed. Clean the dishwasher, kettle and coffee pot. Give your large and small appliances a good cleaning by using vinegar to deodorize, break down dirt and descale. Simply add a cup of vinegar to the appliance, of course, as long as the appliance uses water, let it sit and then run a full cycle through for that appliance. Dump the vinegar and you're in great shape. If you notice that your bathroom faucet or any chrome fixture in your house gets sort of that fuzzy coating on it and it looks not shiny, there's a quick way to fix that. Just dip a microfiber cloth in plain white vinegar and wipe it around the fixture. The vinegar will help to break down any of those hard water deposits or soap scum that might leave your chrome looking a little lackluster. Extremely unimportant fact, both Chad and I wore Invisalign trays I had the pleasure of getting braces twice. First time when I was 13 and I re-upped a few years back. Chad also did it. And one thing we both noticed, aside from beautiful smiles, is that those trays get really yucky. And I was obsessive about brushing mine. I brush them at least twice a day, but they do live in your mouth full time and they're harboring all kinds of bacteria. Now, aside from Invisalign trays, if you're someone that wears a retainer or even a mouth guard for sleeping or sports, you might wanna consider soaking these in a cup filled with water and vinegar. You can use an equal part solution. The vinegar just helps to break down any of that odor causing bacteria and some of the film that might build up. So this won't replace brushing. You still must brush, but you can leave these in and soak them when you're not wearing them or for a couple of hours between wears, 
to help break down odors, obviously give them a really good rinse, and you won't taste or smell vinegar once that's done. Steam clean your microwave. Easy, quick, and painfully effective. Microwave cleaning will never be the same for you again. Simply add equal parts of water and white vinegar and microwave it for about four minutes. Carefully remove the bowl, obviously wearing oven gloves to protect yourself, and wipe the insides clean with a microfiber cloth. The steam created will literally melt off any microwave mess and make clean up a piece of cake. A vinegar flavored piece of cake. One of the great mysteries of our time is why stainless steel is called stainless steel when clearly it stains. An easy way to get rid of fingerprints and shine up any of your appliances or even your kitchen sink is just to spray a 50-50 solution, one part water, one part white vinegar, onto stainless steel, give it a quick buff, and you'll see your stainless steel is nice and shiny. Anyone who composts using one of those compost bags and a little organic spin knows that those bags sweat. Yes, they do. And that is kind of gross. And the bigger issue is that that sweat then drips and pools into the bottom of your compost bin and starts to smell. It's effectively garbage juice and it is sitting there and stinking. So the easiest way to fix that after you've removed your compost bag is to pour some vinegar into the bottom and leave it overnight. No touching, no spinning around with a cloth. Don't worry about it. Just let the vinegar do the work. It's gonna break down some of that yucky buildup, some of the odors, and then in the morning, dump it out, give it a rinse, dry it, replace the bag. No more sweaty smells. Hands stank. If you like to cook, but hate the smell of onions, garlic, meat, fish, and spices on your hands, and of course, the dreaded red beet hand syndrome, try this instead. Clean your hands with soap and water, and then rinse your hands with white vinegar. The vinegar will help remove those strong odors and colors in the instance of beets, and leave your hands looking and smelling clean afterward. You like that? You like cleaning with vinegar? Why don't you try cleaning with baking soda? In our baking soda favorites video, we have 27 baking soda cleaning tips, so you can check that out as well. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and you can check out our Makers Clean microfiber products and cleaning tools over at makersclean.com. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.